Welcome to video 23 in series 3 and in this video I'll show you how to control the cursor state. Okay, so to begin with I'm going to make an empty game object for myself. I don't have to reset its position but I just feel like it. I'll call it the game manager. I like attaching scripts like the one I'm about to make to the game manager and I'm going to make a new C sharp script and I'll call it game manager. I could actually, you know, create it on the game manager, but I'm just, this is my habit. Game manager, a cursor toggle. Okay, then I'll open it up and get to work on it. Okay, and as usual, namespace. And I'll have a variable, a boolean, and I'm going to call it private bool is cursor locked. And I'm going to use this as my flag. It starts off as false. How my system is going to work is that when the game starts, the cursor will be locked and not visible. If the player presses escape, then the cursor will be toggled. It'll, if it was locked, and not visible, it will then become unlocked and visible. If they press escape again, it will then toggle back into the locked and not visible state. And I use a boolean as my flag. And you'll see here something a bit unusual about it. It is simple, but you, there's just one sort of odd, odd thing about this cursor locking that you just need to know, which you're about to learn. Uh, all right, so first of all, I'll have a method for toggling uh, that boolean. So I'll call it void toggle cursor state, for example. And the way to do that is to say is cursor locked boolean. It's either true or false. And one way to toggle is to say equal to not whatever the current state is. Very nice. So if it's true, then it'll be not true. So it becomes false. If it's false, it'll become not false, which is true. Okay. Uh, then I'll have another method here. Uh, I think I'll check for input. And in this one, I'll say if input.getKey down. And what is that? Key code dot escape. Then in that case, toggle cursor state. Okay, then I'll have another method, which will be called an update. And I think I'll call this one check if, it's a logical name, check if cursor should be locked. Yeah. All right. And I'll use the Boolean to help me. Uh, so I'll say if is cursor locked, then the following should happen. I'll say that um, cursor dot lock state is equal to cursor lock mode dot uh, locked. Okay, so that's it. I'm saying if this boolean has been set to true, so is cursor locked, then I'll set the cursor lock state to locked. Perhaps I should have called the boolean should cursor be locked. Perhaps. But anyway, now that only locks the cursor to the middle of the screen. So the cursor will freeze into the middle of the screen, but it doesn't hide it. Cursor dot visible is equal to uh, false. Yep. Oh, I suppose that's logical, isn't it? And then else. And then it's just the opposite of these or a different state. So I'll just copy that to make things a bit quicker and say uh, dot none. So there we go. And this is now is true. Uh, now I have to put this in update. So normally when you're setting states of stuff, you only need to call it once and that's it and it's done. But uh, there's something funny with the cursor. Uh, it doesn't always behave as you might expect. And so because of that, for safety, I put it inside update. And it's a very lightweight method and won't have a, a significant performance impact on the game. 
but I just have no choice. I have to do this. So first of all, check for input in update. So that way, if a player presses something, it will get recognized. Then check if cursor should be locked. Otherwise, if you don't have an update, yes, it might work from time to time, but sometimes it can mysteriously unlock on you. And if you don't have an up, call it an update, it won't get locked back again. Well, it's just a strange thing I've observed anyway over usage. I mean, over using uh, the cursor system. And I don't think I need a start function at all. So I'll just get rid of that. And uh, I guess I might as well go ahead and try it out. Okay, so going to my game manager, drop it in. Now, to really see it in action, you have to hit on, hit maximize on play. Well, let me just hit play anyway. See what happens. And then, looks like nothing happened. Alright. So let me try maximize on play. Alright. Ah, you know what's happened? Ah, I'm silly. I did need the start function. So I have to call it, right? I want it to, I want it to start, of course, locked and not visible. So what am I thinking? So of course I have to do that. So I should call toggle cursor state in the start function. Now when I call toggle cursor state, this boolean will be set to uh, false. Oh, sorry, it'll be set to uh, true. And then the cursor will in fact be locked. So let me try that again. All right, perfect. Now it's working. If I hit escape, there we go. I can see my cursor. If I press escape, it's gone and locked. And I can do stuff properly. All right, let me remove that. Let me turn off maximize on play. Let me try again. All right, it's working in this view. Okay, that's good. If I hit escape, yep, it appears again. It's a bit odd. Press escape again. Nah. Yeah, it, well, in this view, it's not always going to work properly. In fact, it doesn't usually. Like, you'll click, and then your cursor will appear up in the scene view and stuff. You have to really configure the window so you only have a game window visible. So when you're really play testing, you hit maximize on play and then test it. Or you click on this down button and hit maximize here uh, while you're pay playing uh, to just get it into the uh, suitable view for cursor lock. So it's, yeah, just the way it is. All right, so that's it. I've shown you how to uh, lock the cursor. And it's essential, of course, for any FPS game. All right, so in the next video, I'll show you about spawning uh, a lot more enemies. Thanks for watching, and see you then.